currently driving home from our last practice. Jamie and I made another last minute routine tonight. So tomorrow's big day, big trouble time. Let's get it. No. Too short to get it all right. So it's become tradition for me to either do a hot bath, sauna, or something of that sort of thing the night before a jam for my mental and physical bodies. This time of breakfast. Like champions. I prefer salad bowls. First time around, you better not fuck up. I film a whole B-roll section of me getting my bag ready and I completely forgot it at home. So yes, I had to drive back 15 minutes to get it. This guy's a goof. Now I'm running just barely on time. <laughs> Footwork prelims done. Feeling eh about it. Definitely felt pretty forced, but um, whatever. Got it done though. Three on threes up next. Let's go. top eight in footwork and we just did our three on three prelims apple break doing good top 16 footwork i didn't feel like i did too well but i still got it Top eight, I'm pretty happy with it. A little kind of eh part, but my energy level was like overall. It's a long jam. It's 9 30. Three on three prelims still going on, so. Energize and get back at it. Battle squad, he go by the name of Star.
Hey y'all, this is it. Man, I'm fucked up. You know, it's your boy Trick Master Funk with the boy Magneto. He just did it real incognito tonight. You know how we do it. Stay cruising to the music and the beat, the match, and the win. Now or never. You know how we do it. Battle over. We lost in finals to those fucking wizards. Close battle. Good battle. Uh, I had to fucking train, dude. I was falling all night. But had some good moments, had some Magnus moments. Excited to get back into it. Training. B Boy Magneto. We're back. Are we back? Are we back? We're back. I think we're back. It's a wrap on Big Trouble. Workshops tomorrow. I'll film a little bit of that. But um, yeah, that's it. Came home, got my food now. We eat in some rice, green peas, peppers. Lots of good shit. Feels really good actually eating a whole food healthy meal after battle. Usually I'm like, oh, I finished battle. French fries time. But um, this time I wasn't feeling it because I've got the workshops tomorrow and there's lots of stuff going on. So, okay, talking and eating, not the best idea. But <laughs> done that now. Um, I wanted to chat quickly, check in. Um, after the battle, fuck, am I rusty as shit or what? But it was a it was an N01 footwork final between Jax and Sevi. Sev took it. Respect, respect to you, two, 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 Jax. Respect, respect to. Um, and then, yeah, man. And then for the three on three, it doesn't even matter to me so much about the winning. It's the fact that as a crew, we all showed up. We had like, there was us three and then there was just surrounded by a crew behind us. And that is fucking what's up, man. Now or never crew, yo. We here to stay. That's, that's loud. We here to stay. We're not going anywhere, baby. Check it out. Stay tuned. There's some fire to come. I'm super excited, man. The crew's fucking dope. It's now or never, baby. It's now or never. We're going to do it. We're going to come together like birds with a feather and start flying. Whose land? Our land. Shout out Remind for that shout out. Now or never, baby. Big trouble. It was fun. P.S. Tyo, Jamie, and I were fucking so faded before finals. And, um, um, but then we, we, we dug deep and we, we brought the heat in the end. And I think that that is, uh, that's the cool thing about breaking, that you pull out that adrenaline from nowhere. Just that crew mentality, you fucking come together and when, it, when it's time, it's time and you just gotta pull it out. And I think we pulled it out pretty fucking fat and I'm, uh, I'm pretty stoked with how we did. I'm really excited to see the footage. And uh, yeah, man. When you're in pure exhaustion, you gotta dig deep, and that's what family is there for, that's what crew's there for, and that's what it's all about. Stay true to your crew, stay true to your family, now or never crew. Big Trouble in Little Vancouver 5, we out. Judges are so.
What about balancing like creative, artistic sessions and like training sessions? Any thoughts on that? I mean, I think like as as a b boy or a b girl, I think your uh, your creative like stuff has to come first. Yeah, I think so. I, I would never sacrifice like my like actual breaking for like my physical work because your physical, your training, your strength conditioning, your metabolic work. The point in that is to make this better. The point's not to be good over here. So just like any athlete, like what I work with, I work with figure skaters, for instance, and like I can't even skate very well, which is the funny part. But like for me, I have to be like, yo, like your your stuff on the ice comes first, and your strength work, whatever. That's that's like supplementary. So I would always like prioritize your actual dancing, and then supplement the stuff. Would you use your dancing as conditioning, or would you condition outside of that? I would use your dancing as conditioning if you, um, because again, that's as specific as it gets. Right? That's what you're doing, so you can't beat that. At the same time, the only reason I wouldn't use B1 or B girl like, as conditioning all the time is that it's so tough on joints. Yeah. So I would sprinkle in like my metabolic work with stuff that like you can train your lap, your aerobic system, sorry, your anaerobic system without doing full work. You need to get your energy system work in, and the point is to support the B1 mm -hmm. or B girl. Like, and I would never sacrifice one for the other. Like, well, yeah, like, so in your week, say you wanna break so many hours, for instance, say that's how you set your week up. Mm -hmm. I would always just sprinkle in your strength work and stuff like on the side. Like before, of, after? Uh, if it's ever? in the same day? Yeah. Or would you not? If it's in the same, same day? day, okay, okay. If it's in the same day, besides from that, that idea Riley and I have where you try to make it like a jam, if it's all going to be in the same day, if one big day you're going to do strength, power work, you're going to break, and you're going to do metabolic work, then I would, I would do that order. I'd go strength, power, while your tissue and your muscle is fresh mm -hmm. to get your max work capacity out. Then I would do my session, I'd break, I'd do whatever you're going to vibe on that day, get creative, whatever, and then at the end I'd drain out the reserves and go anaerobic and like do my energy system work. My question is just like, what are your thoughts on like nutrition? Like, do you follow a specific diet and shoulds or shouldn't specifically? Um, hmm. Well, for B1, if I want to be specific, you want to stay light as much as possible and lean. So, I mean, you want to make sure, probably the, the five keys or three keys I follow are like, make sure you, you're getting proper protein intake to recover. Make sure you're uh, getting like your proper balances of protein, carb, whatever. Vitamin C is very important if you're stressing tendon and connective tissue. So that's a huge one. And then hydration. Those are your, your big things. Um, there's a lot that you can play with in there, but those are big ones. Um, but yeah. yeah. Well, the way I started to get into dancing was very innocent, like most of us probably. Like other people start to play basketball, soccer, football, dance, baseball, or whatever. I just couldn't do team sports. I didn't get involved with like being in a team and just all the things like you gotta use the ball to the other, you know. <laughs> I, I wanted to play. Right. I wanted to play. And in dancing I just found myself that everything is just about how I do my thing at that particular moment. So I didn't have to okay, your turn to play now. Yeah, right. I have to do it myself. So that was that was my way of starting, but I think at a very, very young age already, but well, first of all, I grew up with music. <clears throat> and uh, at a very young age already, I kind of like found out that I, I love quality of movement. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, and it, only, it only dawned to me years later when I saw a carpenter on the roof across from my house, on the roof in the end. He had a hammer and a couple of nails in, in his mouth, and one nail was, he was just moving on the path. Over, uh, mm, do, 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 push. Mm, uh, do, 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 push. <laughs> and he had a rhythm going, and I was like, to my wife, I was like, look, look, look. And she was like, he's dancing. And she's like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's, it's just that I really admire when somebody has quality in what you do. Not, not really just movement, but the movement is just the visuals. And since I'm a dancer, I think that uh, I'm 
I think we'll be very, very much impressed about it. So I'll start dancing uh, in the 90s, early 90s, and I just happened to be uh, at the right place at the right time. I grew up in San Francisco in the Bay Area where uh, I was around DJ Hubert and uh, their dance group called the Knuckle Neck Tribe. And they would have parties inviting people like Crazy Legs, Easy Rock, and uh, my best friend would always show me these videos and I would come across these videos and just be like, wow, what is, what's going on here? And I would see videos of Storm and uh, Rocksteady Crew and you know, B-Boy Summit videos. And you know, once I saw that, I was just like, this is definitely what I want to do. And um, before that, I, I was just all about basketball. And um, when I was in middle school, somebody at the park uh, would just, an older guy would just tell me like, look, you know you're never going to be in the NBA, right? So I didn't know what that meant. I was just like, oh, okay, cool. I just kept playing ball until um, I got to high school and saw these videos and we started going to these parties. So um, after that, that was, I just knew that this was it. You know, this is what I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. And since then, you've been just, just been in? Yeah, yeah. You know, I've just been, um, I mean, this is a beautiful way to connect with other people. Even if we don't speak the same language, that, you know, we connect through dance and movement. And uh, um, I used to compete a lot, but now I, I find that I, I'm realizing that I love to teach and, and just to show like what I know, you know, my movement and yeah. how how it can possibly help you, you know, with you know just being lighter, you know, transition, you know, stuff like that, little detail things. But um, I just uh, I think that's you know that's what keeps me going is just to keep teaching and to share my experience. What up? My name is Abstract. They call me Abstract. I uh, uh, have a crew that's called Skill Methods. They started out in 95, but uh, I guess I was exposed to, like, I, I would call it wood music as a kid. I'm like a late 70s child, so my mom loved music, and I guess being exposed to like what I would call ritualistic uh, movement, Meaning like, you know, sometimes there would always be like little salsa merengue parties in my house. Mm -hmm. So I've always was attracted to that. And you know, you hear the percussion, you just want to dance. I didn't know what I was doing, so it's like, okay, this feels good. And then uh, somewhere along the line, you know, uh, growing up on Michael Jackson, that kind of pushed me more to like, you know what, let me, let me get into that a little bit. Let me mix it up with whatever style I'm doing at that moment. And uh, <clears throat> I was at this uh, school. Well, actually, it was like a daycare. It was really like seven. And kids were great. They were better than me, but I always like wanted to create, you know, or, uh, absorb what they were doing. So my thing was always like I go front slide. It's like footwork, whack back, spin it up, and back slide. <laughs> 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 I was like, all right, cool. It felt good. You was doing it exactly. Right? <laughs> but I, the crazy thing is that my my grandfather was fortunate at the time to have footage of that. So I still have it. So I'm looking, I'm looking back at it and I'm like, oh snap. That's how wet I was. <laughs> but yeah, from there, you know, I mean, that didn't last too long because I was, you know, young and, you know, leaving that daycare, I didn't see those kids anymore. But my mom, you know, she, she had me when she was 15. So she was always going out. You know, my grandma would take care of me, kind of raise me. And my mom was always talking about going to like places and seeing like people break, you know. And I'm pretty sure it was probably like, because I'm originally from New York, so. It's probably like Rock City or somebody, one of those crews back in the day, you know? Yeah. And then she would come back and talk about like she was doing some railroad dance. I didn't know what it was at the time, you know? So just being around that, like, uh, you know, at early age, it's like fortunate for me, I guess. And then, but then after a while, like, that left me from seven to like, I would say 17, I didn't get until I moved to Florida, which, you know, it was a, I guess, a pivotal moment in my life where. Things weren't going right for me at a young age in New York. So I was like, all right, I need to you know, move forward. And I started to live with my uncle. He's strict. So if I didn't get uh, grades right, you know, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. If I live with him, I'm going to be in a straight line. Right. So uh, from there, you know, started uh, getting into techno house, house, freestyle dancing, which is like Coral and Cynthia. Anybody knows about this? Of course. Yes. <laughs> you know, just freestyle dancing and uh, try to do a fusion of breaking, you know? And then after a while, I was like, okay, I gotta take the breaking series. Um, so every now and then, I kind of mix it up. And, but at, at, at 
95 is when I really started taking the Reiki series. Okay. Uh, I, I'm kind of kind of going off, but yeah, that's kind of like a brief history of me. What keeps me going? Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like for me, I think as a community, we're like we're we're still trying. We're still like have that tribalness in us because that's lost in, the, in like humans in the human. Experience, yeah. you know, some people are so disconnected, and I think me connecting with people, you know, that because my days of battling, yeah, I still do it, but I've done it so much that like I want to connect, I want to hear people's stories and connect with them, especially people that I looked up to, like Wicked, Storm, you know what I'm saying, Charles, and, and for this guy, like for me, I uh, I appreciate, especially what he's done, the freestyle session, like if it wasn't for that, a lot of us wouldn't be connected as we are now, you know what I'm saying. So that's my brief history. Thank you. I'm a little nervous. So I'm sorry. I was too. Uh, I, I didn't want to game anything. Yeah. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be a no Daniel. I didn't want to be uh, one of the local gangs from my neighborhood. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to play college baseball. Uh, I don't know kind of where to start, but uh, I kind of grew up in the neighborhood. You know, we all kind of know these areas, but uh, the local, the local gangsters would listen to freestyle music next to their cars because they would kind of like lace up their cars with beat, you know, and hit. You could hear like different different beat around the neighborhood, right? And so like, you know, music has always been around for me. Uh, Detrimental things kind of happened throughout my life to where it made me want to break, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, being that I'm Creole and Mexican, sometimes identifying with uh, certain groups just doesn't work. But I can't just be raised by an all-black family or you know Southern family yeah. and then then you go kick it with some other things. That shit don't happen, <laughs> you know. Um, so I grew up uh, fighting a lot getting into a lot of fights. Uh, and then uh, my father was killed and uh, I, I, it got worse. So uh, I gotta be thankful for my local Filipino community and my local uh, Asian community, Malls, Cambodians, Thais, Laos. Uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to have those people in my life at that time because they helped uh, inspire me to do what I do today. They inspired the original five members of my group, Climax Crew in Fresno. And uh, being at Fresno is probably like the birthplace of Poppin. Um, I was always on the west side where Poppin was created before it was the west side. And like hanging out on Sunset, you know, with, with some of my friends at the liquor store, playing Street Fighter. Um, you know, thankful for the Asian community because I was, able, I was able to rock with them and be safe, you know, because there was a lot of cats that were involved with breaking that just didn't understand hip hop, like the culture, but neither did I, you know. So I thought it was like, oh, you don't like that I can play 90, 100 times in a row? Well, cool, I'm gonna bust you up, right? And, um, that's what it was, and then I, I, I came across a few videos, uh, Radiotron, and um, Pop Storm, and uh, I, I, I would wait with uh, some of my crew members my family, and we'd sit and watch that comedy channel. Ooh. And we'd wait for um, this one episode where Flowmaster and, and Storm was on. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I can remember you know, the, the shirt Storm had, the pants he had, and we taught ourselves how to do like head spins because of that. Wow. And like a lot of our, our, our early moves came from that. So this is where I started to <laughs> step away from the Asian community and I started to develop um, becoming a beat boy. But even at that, I was just a scratch. You know? Uh, so, uh, I, I just didn't want to get and that's like my early, 
early things. I mean, of course, you know, those things try to follow you. Yeah. They still follow me. The outlet. The outlet, you know. And so, uh, growing up, uh, I just kind of worked hard and started doing some really amazing things. And uh, I didn't have my mother and didn't have my father, so my grandparents from the South they took care of me. And my grandfather was native and black, so he was really strict. And uh, I, I, I never had, what can I say, the, the want to talk back or disrespect my granddad. Mm -hmm. uh, but some, some things are not perfect even like that. Yeah. And so how I, how I fell in love with hip hop was because of James Brown and my grandmother. Right. Um, that's why I have this tattoo. So I used to get, get whooped for breaking. I was supposed to be at a bat, 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 baseball practice. Uh, that was just a natural thing. I played middle infield for 12 years of my life. Okay. And you know, they, were, they were talking about for me going to City College or Fresno State. But I wasn't the type of guy to just sit on the bench. I had too many friends when I was growing up that just sat on the damn bench. Right. And they wanted to play. And I felt bad for them. So I would walk up to the coach and be like, yo, man, I don't want to play today. Only needs to get a, get a shot. Yeah, I, I mess around with John, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I did used to break dance, so uh, pretty much it was like a back to back pain, like in the '80s, uh, discovering hip hop through uh, around the MC tape uh, led me to you know just sharing that music with all my friends, and them all put me on the freestyle music and the Roxanne Roxanne stuff and all that stuff and. Um, in like 84, like, Britain was literally everywhere in America, you know, so there wasn't really many places you could go where you didn't see it for a good solid year and a half at least, you know, so of course I got into it, and you know, my sister got into it, and she's a little younger than me, but I mean, literally everybody in my block got into it, so we were practicing at my friend's house, uh, we were battling other blocks, our neighbors around the corner, like they'd have their own little group, the nursery, we go to the mall, and if there was a, a bunch of people with a boombox, like it was on, you know, like we basically get kicked out of the mall for <laughs> battling, <laughs> going to skate, skate rinks, and battling. And um, at the time, I was in judo, and I, I was very competitive in that. And I went to uh, Odessa, Texas, for the national championship in '84, and it was crazy because there was there was uh, you know kids from all around the nation, and but everybody broke. So like there was like a dance like right the day before. And like it was literally like an East Coast, West Coast battle. Like all the people from California basically battling everybody else from like New York, Florida. And, and it was insane. And, um, you know, a little bit of time went by, um, by 85-ish. I mean it just kind of feels like it came and went, you know. Um, and I and I was always into sports, like I said, judo, uh, baseball, tried to do football, didn't really work. <laughs> Um, and then when, and then after after breaking, um, you know, a lot of a lot of my friends turned into gangbangers. So um, it was like half of my friends were were gang, like about to be in gangs. The other half were into to like graffiti and street art. So I I would try to stay away from all of it, but finally like graffiti got me because I was like really into artwork, you know. Right. And that was like the hip hop thing to do. I was always drawing Playboy bunnies and, and all the stuff that was on the records. Yeah. Because I was collecting records at the time. And uh, yeah, so I got a graffiti. Um, it's crazy because the graffiti scene uh, was all like a lot of hip hop cats. And say fast forward to the 90s, I'm in high school, senior in high school, um, New Year's, there's a rave. So now you have, now you get into the, the rave time, party crews. You know, people doing like little techno dances and house dances. Show us. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, so so I went to a I went to a, a big rave. I was at Mouse Break Farm in Anaheim, and uh, I went with my crew. We were all writers. We were all we all on break too, you know. But that was just cause from back in the day. But uh, we went to like the hip hop side, and like Black Sheep was performing. What? Uh, 
seen a bunch of other people before and performing and there was circles. In there. So we go up in there and everybody's down there. So we, like, we, we just got down and after that night we were like, dude, it's breaking back. Like, let's start practicing. So we start practicing. Uh, we, we would go to other, uh, you know, like parties and people were breaking. Like, so there was this whole other side. It was like the house, uh, you know, techno, whatever you want to call it, people breaking to that music. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we went to, like a couple months later, we went to a party and it was like half hip hop, half, half like house and techno yeah. and party groups. So like, it was all, all like the Latinos who were frequenting a lot of the house parties. And then it was like a whole nother hip hop side, which I knew a lot of hip hop guys because they're all writers. Right. Well, they go, what's up, man? I was like, you break too, what? I break too. But then they battled, we had a battle and we like, the, the side that went to the party crew places, they, they just got smoked. Like, we got smoked. Like, I, was, yeah. I, was them, but I was friends with all the hip hop cats, so I was like, man, I didn't know y'all great. Like, so afterwards, I started kicking with uh, a couple guys. I met these guys from Delivery Boys, and that was my uh, crew. And uh, yeah, after that, like, we got super serious into it, practicing all the time. And uh, one of the first B Boy summits in San Diego, I was around that. I went to the first couple of radio shows, that's where I met Wicked. Um, and uh, yeah, and next thing you know, uh, we're just battling everybody, smoking everybody in San Diego, <laughs> and got to go out. So then we go to LA. That's where I met like Pooh John, all those cats right there, Riverside. And it was crazy because back then, like every little area had their own little traits, you know, like right. like whereas now anywhere in the world, everybody kind of breaks similar because of the internet. Back in the day, it was like you go to LA. People were doing like full work, you know, they were, they were doing, you know, power moves, but more windmill based. Uh, Riverside was like windmill 90s. We were, my, my area was known for like turtles, um, you know, flare under flares. And you go to like the bay and they just did everything. <laughs> <laughs> like we, we, went to, we went to a practice with, with Wicked and Jazzy J and we went to a practice with them one time. And, like, I think Jazzy J like rolled out of bed and did like this crazy combo and we wanted to go home after that. We had to be too good, but uh, nah. And then, um, yeah, and then eventually uh, B-Boy Summit kind of came and went in San Diego. So uh, that kind of leads me into why I'm still doing it. Um, in San Diego, the scene kind of just kind of diminished like to where Say like a practice normally would be about this many people. It got to a point where it was like just me in practice, you know. So I was like, okay, what, when do people actually go to practice? It's when when events like that happen because they want to get ready for the event. It wasn't like now where you have to like train year round. It was more like, all right, we're gonna do it for a couple of weeks before the event and we'll be ready, you know. So so like that was my my mo was to to create, create something that. Everybody has wants to shoot for it, so they want to be at that. Then I won't be at one in practice, right? <laughs>